In today's tutorial, we will talk about the digestion and absorption of the lipids. So let's start from the very first term that is digestion. Regarding this digestion point of view, it is believed that digestion starts from the mouth and ends at the small intestine. And the very logic behind this uh, starting and ending is the availability of enzymes in your this particular portion of the GIT. In the mouth, we have uh, digestive enzymes known as lingual lipase. Now I'm talking about those enzymes which are going to act on the lipids. And in the gastric region, we have gastric lipase. And here in the small intestine, there is availability of enzyme known as pancreatic lipase. Now these pancreatic lipase enzymes are actually secreted by the pancreas into the small intestine. And these enzymes are actually responsible to do the digestion. And uh, the next point that the digestion is completed in the small intestine. And the very reason behind is availability of the bile salts from the gallbladder. Now these bile salts will be secreted into the small intestine. Here our lipids will be broken down into small, small, tiny, tiny droplets. Then on those droplets, the enzymes from pancreas will act on these small droplets and then like the digestion process of the lipids will get complete. So now let's understand this entire process of the digestion and absorption through this diagrammatic point of view. First of all, the lipids that we ingest are actually in the large size. These are large size particles. Now, uh, it is not possible for the body to absorb these large size particles. So these must be converted into small size particles. And this is brought about by help of the bile salts from the gallbladder. When these bile salts are secreted into the small intestine, here we will be having the lipids. Then these lipids will be converted into small, tiny, tiny droplets. This process is known as emulsification. So now what happened? Our lipids converted into small size, tiny, tiny droplets. Now this is very easy for the cells, enterocytes of the intestine to absorb these small, small, tiny, tiny droplets. You guys know that lipids are actually made up of the fatty acid and alcohol. When fatty acid, alcohol combine together, they will make the lipid. Now when we break this lipid, what will be formed? Again, the fatty acid and alcohol will be produced. And now here the fatty acids are the free fatty acids and alcohol are known as the monoglyceride. Now these free fatty acid and monoglycerides will be then diffused into the enterocytes of the small intestine. And from here we have two different thoughts. The very first one is that those fatty acids which are of small chain, they will be absorbed into the enterocytes then into the blood vessels in a very easy way. So then they will move directly into the blood vessel. Like this, they will become the part of the blood. So like this, the absorption is done of the small chain free fatty acids. Regarding the long chain free fatty acids and monoglyceride, the thought is that these will be diffused into the enterocytes and in the enterocytes, these will be resynthesized. So these will be converted back into the triglyceride, cholesterol, phospholipids and etc. Here, some proteins and vitamins will also join these triglyceride, cholesterol and phospholipids and a new structure will be produced known as chylomicrons. Now these fatty acids which are converted now which are now resynthesized in the form of triglycerides will be carried by the chylomicrons into the lymphatic capillaries. These will bypass the blood vessels. The reason behind is the size. They are having actually a larger size, a larger diameter due to which it will be our kind of difficult to be absorbed into the blood vessels directly. So like this, our they are actually indirectly then poured into the blood vessels. How like? Very simple. Now these chylomicrons will carry all these triglyceride, cholesterol, vitamins, protein, etc. into the lacteals. From here, in the lymphatic capillaries, then through the lacteal, these will travel throughout your body. And like this, it will provide, while well, traveling through the body, these will be providing the energy to the body and it will be stored somehow in the adipose tissues also. And later on, there will be a kind of storage available when these enter into the blood vessels. Well, coming to the point, so they will just come and they will travel through the lymphatic system and then they will join the blood vessels through the subclavian vein. Like this, we came to know that how these fatty acids are digested and absorbed and they are becoming the part of the blood directly and indirectly. Now let us summarize our lecture in uh, some points. First of all, you will do the ingestion or intake of the lipids. They will be digested. Uh, emulsification will be done by the bile salts. And uh, after that, uh, there will be action of the pancreatic lipases.
and like this the digestion will be complete then after the completion of digestion so we know absorption is supposed to be done and uh, after the absorption then uh, these absorbed uh, lipids are supposed to go through and travel through the, your blood vessels and lacteals and like this then lipids are responsible to provide the energy and uh, sometimes when we take access of the lipids then they will be stored in your body and whenever there is a kind of deficiency of the energy or there is a need of energy they will be again used utilized to produce the energy required and that's a little bit from my side regarding the digestion and absorption of the lipids if still you have any kind of question you are free to ask us in the comment box we'll come for the answers very soon thank you for watching